Hi, so it's time for Wednesday night story time. So we've got some good stories for tales and tales about, um, one is about a coyote, you know, some pieces about a dog, and, um, and also one about turtles, turtle summer. So let's enjoy. So this first story is called How the Coyote Stole Summer. Back at the beginning of time, old man coyote was cold. He wasn't cold some of the time. He wasn't cold most of the time. He was cold all of the time. The weather ranged from cold to very cold to freezing cold. Old man Coyote spent his days shivering and shuddering. Icicles hung from his nose and his toes. Frost covered his fur from head to tail and he couldn't do anything about it. Poor Coyote. One morning, Coyote woke up covered with a blanket of fresh snow. As he shook it off, he thought he could hear some ice cracking above him. Then he looked up. The sound came from Raven. He was crackling over Coyote's head. What are you laughing about? Asked Coyote. Every time I see you, you are laughing at me. That's because you're so funny, said Raven. Here you are suffering in the cold when you could be nice and warm. I could, said Coyote. <laughs> the Raven nodded. Listen closely. Far from here is a teepee where an old woman and her children live. Old woman has a special gift that she keeps in a black bag. This gift is called summer. She will not share it with anyone. But if you could get this summer, you would be warm at last. Old man coyote eyed Raven suspiciously. In that case, he said, why haven't you taken summer for yourself. Ah, uh, said the raven, I wish I could, but this old woman is powerful. A bird like me would have no chance against her. There he is. But I am only a single animal, said Coyote. Why are my chances any better? You cannot do it alone, Raven admitted. You must take five other animals with you, a wolf, a moose, a stag, an elk, and an antelope. You will also need this powerful medicine that I will give you. Old man Coyote wasn't sure if he should believe Raven. But what if there was really a chance for him to be nice and warm? That was a chance worth taking. Coyote went to see the other animals Raven had mentioned. They were all just as cold as he was. Coyote told them what Raven had said. They too were a little suspicious. They are. But the idea of getting warm was too tempting to resist. So they agreed to help. Raven and I have a plan, said Coyote. 
then he explained, explained what everyone would need to do. The plan unfolds. Coyote and Wolf crept up to a hill and carefully looked over the top. He saw the old teepee where old woman lived with her many children. It is time, Coyote whispered. Wolf stepped out into the clearing. Then he began to howl. Oh! Old woman's children looked around. Who was making that noise? It's a wolf, said one. We must catch him, said another. And cook him, said a third. And eat him, said a fourth. Go, started to chase after Wolf, he ran away as fast as he could. Coyote smiled. With the children gone, there was no one to stop him. Here he is. <gasps> Who's that? Slowly, carefully, he crept up to the flap of the teepee. Then Coyote poked his head inside. There he saw old woman. She was busy making moccasins and humming to herself. Suddenly, she stopped. Who's there? She asked. In a flash, Coyote leaped forward. He smeared Raven's medicine on old woman's lips. She cried out, but no word escaped her mouth. The medicine had magically removed her voice. Coyote looked around and saw a black bag sitting on the ground. He grabbed it and darted out of the tent. Old woman still could not speak, but she rushed outside and put a pine branch over her fire. It sent a great plume of smoke into the air. She is with the branch. Old women's children saw the smoke from a distance. They knew at once that something was wrong. They stopped chasing Wolf and hurried home. They got there just in time to see Coyote running away with the black bag. Hmm, they don't look happy. The mom was waving and jumping up and down. She didn't need to say a word. Her children could see what had happened. Stop, thief! They shouted. Then they ran after Coyote as fast as they could. The chase. Coyote was fast. He bounded across the plains, holding the bag between his teeth. But every time he looked back, old woman's children were getting closer and closer. If Coyote had been alone, old woman's children surely would have caught him. But luckily, he was not alone. Over the next hill, he reached the place where Moose was waiting. Go, 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 he gasped, passing the bag to Moose and Moose trotted off on her fresh legs. Coyote turned to face old woman's children. What's he gonna do? But they ran past him without even a look. All they cared about was getting the bag back. Moose ran through the brush. The bushes did not bother her. But they slowed down old woman's children for a while. Then they began to catch up. Well, they were almost on Moose when she reached the place where Stag was waiting. Your turn, said Moose, dropping to the ground. Stag grabbed the bag and ran on. Old women's children ignored Moose and kept their eyes on Stag. By now, though, they had been running a long time. They were strong and fast, but they were not tireless. Even so, 
they slowly gained on Stag. Just as they were catching up again, Stag reached Elk and passed the bag off to her. Off with you, said Stag. Elk was faster than Stag. Old women's children were panting hard as they continued the chase. They kept pace with Elk for a while, but as fast as they ran, they could not catch her. When Stag got tired, he met up with Antelope, who was the fastest of all. Go catch the wind, said Stag, passing the bag along. Antelope bounded off. The sight of Antelope was a blow to old woman's children. They had run as far as their legs and hearts could carry them. Hated to admit defeat, but Antelope perked pulled farther and farther away. Finally, the children came to a stop. The new season begins. Antelope saw that the children had stopped following her. So she made her way back to Coyote's village. There she waited for the other animals to arrive. Elk was first, followed by Stag, Moose, and Wolf. Flying overhead was Raven, cackling the whole time. Coyote was the last to get back. The others gave him the honor of opening the bag. Let's see what all this trouble has gotten us, said Coyote. As he opened the bag, Summer jumped out like a great gust of wind. The animals could feel it at once. The icicles and frost melted away, leaving behind gray puddles. All around them, colors spread over the landscape. Flowers bloomed in seconds. Leaves seemed to burst out of the tree branches. The grass turned green as far as the animals could see. But the animals had forgotten one thing. With summer breaking out, it wasn't hard for old woman and her children to track them down and they appeared quickly. You are a thief, old woman shouted at Coyote. You and your friends have stolen summer from our mother, said her children. You need to give it back. I will not, said Coyote. Summer is too precious to be sealed up in a bag. It should be shared by everyone. If you do not give it back, said old woman's children, we will make war upon you. Old Man Coyote wanted to be warm, but he did not want to fight in a war. The other animals felt the same. I have an idea, said Coyote. Why don't we share summer between us? You can have it for half of the year, and we will have it for the other. Do you think that's a good idea to share it? Old woman and her children stopped to think. They were still angry, but they knew that going to war would not make them feel any better. And they too liked how summer felt now that it was out in the open air. <sighs> that is fair, they said finally. And so the animals and old woman's family shared summer between them ever since. Afterward, coyotes live all over North America, from Canada to United States to Mexico. But this wasn't always the case. Hundreds of years ago, most coyotes 
live on the plains and deserts of Central and Western North America. The Native American groups in these areas tell many stories about coyotes. In stories, coyotes are often tricksters. A trickster is a character who plays tricks to do certain tasks. Tricksters often break the rules. Sometimes they play tricks to do something good, such as sharing summer with everyone. Other times, a trickster might play a mean trick on someone else. The story in this book is set in Wyoming, where the Eastern Shoshone live. The illustrations show the Wyoming landscape, flat grassy plains and the Rocky Mountains in the background. The style of the teepee and the clothing old women and the children wear are similar to traditional Shoshone teepees and clothing. Native American groups such as Shastas, Kubas, and Shoshones all tell stories about a coyote stealing something, but the stories are not all the same. For example, in some versions, coyote steals fire from the old woman instead of stealing summer. In other versions, the coyote steals daylight. The animals that help them are also different in different stories. In a Shasta story, the helpers are a squirrel, a chipmunk, and a frog. Native American stories do not start out being written in books. People learn the stories by hearing other people tell them out loud. Every storyteller might tell a story a little bit differently. If you were telling the story to a friend, how would you tell it? So tell me, um, what did you think of that story? Did you, did you enjoy that story? Um, I did. I thought it was pretty cool. It uh, does explain to you why summer only lasts half the year. Actually, we have four seasons in, in Michigan, spring, summer, fall, and winter. But it's a fun story. So tell me what you liked about it. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Um, or, but I also have another story to share with you. So, this story is called Turtle Summer. And it's um, written by Mary Alice Monroe. A summer, a journal for my daughter. So different kinds of shells you would see. As you collect seashells along the shore for me, I've gathered these photographs and memories for you these seashells in your hands, each photo in this book is a treasure to explore. Each picture has its own special story. Bring them close to your heart. Listen. Um, so there's morning glories, heart shells, moon snails, muzzles, shells. So these are some turtles. Primroses, clamshell, firewheel, or Indian blanket. Black skimmers. It is May and the loggerhead seashirt turtles are returning to our island to lay their eggs. Every day we walk together from the beach house to sit on our favorite dune, watch and wait and wonder. Are the turtles out there in the rolling swells? When will we come ashore? You were my helper on the island turtle team you are eager to learn about the sea turtles, the flowers, the shells, the birds, and all things great and small. I hope that I can teach you, as a dear lady once taught me, to not merely know nature, but also to feel nature. So there's Primrose Cottage, different, different. Okay. Only the female turtles leave their home great sea to lay their eggs on the beach of their birth. With a tank-like crawl, the turtle drags herself to a site high on the beach. One night, he 
watched a logger had come ashore. We hunk her down and kept her distance so not to disturb her. If startled by humans or other animals or lights, the loggerhead won't lay her eggs. The mother turtle spends her hours digging deep into the sand, then laying her eggs. When finished, she leaves for the sea, never to return to her nest. Well, she'll never see her babies. Here's, here's a turtle digging in the sand. at the track to and from dropping her eggs. So it looks like when she drops her eggs, she goes to shore. Some more shells. Oyster, oyster shell, mob whelk. Each morning when the sun is still pink on the horizon, volunteers walk the beach on the lookout to turtle tracks. Turtle team studies the field signs and finds the eggs. You said the turtle tracks look like tire tracks. <laughs> if the nest is in a safe place, we mark it with an orange sign saying that the nest is protected by federal law. The nest lies below the high tide line. I dig down to the eggs in the soft, moist sand. Carefully lift the eggs from the nest and place them in our red bucket. Then I carry precious eggs to a spot higher on the beach. I use a shell to dig a nest that will be the same size and shape as the loggerhead's nest. All right, digging the nest. Digging shell. Wow, it's like June, 20 inches deep. Wow, there they are in an orange bucket. You think the eggs look like ping pong balls? They do kind of look like ping pong balls. A red bucket, a large cockle shell. Look at all the shells, all kinds of shells. Beach treasures. The southern sand dollar has five slashes in the shell. Each evening primrose. Now we wait. After the nests are laid, we wait 55 to 65 days for the eggs to incubate. While waiting, we search for seashells and other beach treasures. The sand dollars and sea stars are washed ashore by strong surf. The sand dollar is green with bristly hair it's alive. If a sea star loses a leg, it will grow back. You can carefully put the living sand dollars and sea stars back into the water. Wow, look at there's a sand star. It's moving. You pick up a sea star and see hundreds of tiny feet waving. It's alive. You see the little feet? While we wait, we watch the shorebirds. Royal term. Black skimmers, American oyster catcher, sanderlings. While we wait, we visit the sea turtle hospital. I work at the aquarium and help sea, sea turtles get up. Oh, look how big that one is. It's like she's helping one of her feet. Oh, there's another. Wow. Big girl is ready to get back into her tank. Volunteer helps me take Cherry Point out for treatment. Volunteers help me clean the wounds and shells, give the turtles their medicine, and scrub the tanks. We all feed and love the turtles. Wow, what a fun job, huh? Volunteer. Bear feeds the turtles for a summer camp group. It's got, a, some, it's got a show wrapped up. You say hello to Carolina. Hamlin after surgery. Look at the big tank. First nests begin to hatch in July. It's a busy time for us. In the mornings, we look for turtle tracks. In the 
evenings, we sit by the nest, hoping for hatchlings. Nights by the ocean, breathtakingly black and beautiful. That sky. Sometimes we wonder what the turtles are doing under the sand. Are they awake? Are they sleeping? Are they dreaming? <laughs> Deep in the sand, the baby turtles break through their eggshells and work together to dig upward in the sand. They rise to the surface like an elevator. Our first sign that a nest is hatching is a concave circle in the sand. You always ask me when the nest will hatch. I always answered that I don't know. Oh, there they're coming up. Look. Concave shape. And first turtle and more turtles. The hatchlings usually emerge from the nest at night when the sand is cool. Sometimes they come out slowly over a couple of nights. When they charge out in a wiggling mass, we call it a boil because it resembles a pot boiling over. Instinct guides the hatchlings toward the brightest light. In nature, it is the open horizon with the reflection of moonlight or starlight on the ocean. The bright lights from houses, street lights, and light flashlights confuse them and lead them away from the sea to a certain depth. It's not good to have flashlights on, I guess. They can go the wrong way. Look at all those turtles. August, nest inventory. Three days after hatchlings emerge from their nest, the turtle team does an early morning nest inventory, record the number of hatched and unhatched eggs. Get excited when you find some sleepy hatchlings in a nest. <laughs> They're going to the water. Look at the sky. Oh, they still look at all the babies. <laughs> In the sunlight, we can watch the hatchlings scramble to the sea. They raise their heads as they're sniffing the direction of home or hearing the ancient turtle mother's call. Hatchlings must crawl across the beach to the sea before imprinting. They stop to rest along the way. You know not to touch or carry them. Once the hatchlings reach the water, their dive instincts kick in. The turtles swim off, disappearing in the waves. There's a starfish. Goodbye and good luck. Hatchlings leave our beach to begin a long journey. Not all will survive the many dangers in the great sea. After 30 years, the adult female turtle will return to our beach to nest. She will have grown three inches to over three feet, weigh up to 350 pounds. Wow, it takes her 30 years to return? Wow, 30 years. You will have grown up by then too. I smile and think how you will return home to visit me, just like the loggerhead. Once again, you and I will be together to watch and wait and to welcome. Sea turtle home. Hmm. So, the old signs of a nest ingoing and outgoing cracks, a body pit, thrown sand, broken vegetation, the parting scarp in sand where she turned. On the average, the bogger hill lays four nests a summer, up about two weeks apart. She lays between 80 and 150 eggs in each nest. So she lays over 100 in each nest and lays four nests in the summer. How many eggs will she have laying? The sea turtle also lays so many eggs to make sure that some of the hatchlings with surprise will survive. The eggs look like ping pong balls. They are leathery, so they won't break when they are laid in the nest. She doesn't lay eggs every year. She lays nests every two or three years. After laying all her eggs, she returns to the sea and will never see or know the hatchlings. Female sea turtles return to the same area where they hatch to lay their eggs. Scientists don't know how the turtles find their way home to lay their eggs or think that they had 
hatchlings imprint the area when they walk from the nest to the ocean. For that reason, it is important to let the hatchlings walk across the beach and not to carry them. People make loud noises, shine flashlights on the beach and try to get close to and touch the sea turtle as she comes ashore. She may turn around and leave without nesting. If you're lucky enough to see a sea turtle coming out of the ocean, be quiet and stay at a distance. Don't turn on your flashlight. Let your eyes adapt to the night light. Sometimes ghost crabs or ants will harm the eggs in the nest. Other turtle or the hatchlings might have a difficult time going around sandcastles or big holes dug in the sand. If you play in the sand at the beach, smooth it all out before you leave. Remember, leave only your footprints on the beach. Sea turtles find the way to the ocean by moving toward the brightest, most open horizon, which under natural conditions is toward the ocean. Bright lights may cause the turtles to prowl the wrong way to certain depth. If you run at the beach, turn off the outside lights and pull curtains down at night. Keep the beach dark. Sea turtles like to eat jellyfish and sometimes mistake floating plastic for a jellyfish. Would you get sick if you ate a plastic bag or a deflated balloon? Pick up plastic and trash, even if you are not close to the ocean. So, So it shows you some things you would need to during the turtle nesting. And so this would be, of course, on the ocean. So I hope you enjoyed that story um, about the sea turtles, the loggerhead sweet sea turtles. Also, um, thought it might be fun. We have a couple of videos of pets. Uh, coyotes aren't dogs and dogs aren't coyotes, but they have four legs and a tail, so let's pretend. Um, show, I've uh, got some videos of um, what, how some people treat their pet dogs. One of which, did you know there's a big dog can get picked up on a bus and go to doggy camp where they play all day and then go home on the bus? Let's enjoy. The bus arrives like clockwork every morning across Miami, bringing its passengers to camp, a camp for dogs only. The journey as big a part of the experience as camp itself. This is a bus filled with wagging tails and drooling mouths. Once they arrive, the campers race out of the bus. The most popular spot, a giant bone-shaped pool. After a day of swimming, running, and playing, many of the campers are just ready for a nap. The dog days of summer for dogs only. Lee Powell, the Associated Press. Well, I hope you enjoy that uh, story time. We're going to um, have a little short tonight, but um, there's other uh, videos that you can watch. I'll be happy to share it. So this is Bonnie Balda, hoping you, wishing you a happy and healthy day. So, join me.